In the second episode of season reviews for the Detroit Pistons players, we are talking about Jalen Duran in today's episode. How did the youngest player in the entire NBA's first season go? We'll talk about that in today's episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. You are Locked On Pistons, your daily Detroit Pistons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's the deal? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked on Pistons podcast. Per usual, I'm your host, Kuka Hill. You can find me over on Twitter, at Kuka Hill. I want to thank you guys for making Locked on Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. And if you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel, at Locked on Pistons. Hit that subscribe button. There's about 50% of you guys who are not subscribed. We did pass our goal of 5,000 subscribers, so we are on our way now to 10,000 subscribers, so please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, or you can leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. And today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. A championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. So for parts that fit, head to eBay Motors and look for the green check. Stay in the game with eBay guaranteed fit, ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Um... So in today's episode, we'll be going into our second ep- our second episode. I'm sorry if you guys hear that that buzzing going on. I think that's my my smoke alarm. I don't know what's going on with it, but either way, um, in today's episode, we will be talking about season reviews for Jalen Duran. Later on, we'll talk about Alec Burks' season review. A great great season for the Pistons veteran um, Alec Burks, um, and then also we'll talk about another veteran on the team's season in Rodney Magruder. Um, Before we get started with Jalen Duran's review, I do want to say I'm recording this on April 15th. Um, So yesterday on Friday, there were um, some reports that the Pistons have requested permission to interview um, Chris Quinn of the Miami Heat, Adrian Griffin of um, the Toronto Raptors. Um, So no movement on that front yet. Like I told you guys, I want to get the season reviews out the way first, and then we'll dive into some coaching candidates. Um, that's just how we have scheduled the the off season right now. So if anything else changes, anything big happens, um, in that department, we'll obviously shift gears, but that's how we're going to do it right now. So, um, but anyways, let's get into Jalen Duran's rookie season. Jalen Duran was the youngest player in the entire NBA this year. And at the beginning of the season, because of that reason, and because of the fact that he was, he was in a front court at the time that featured a Kelly Olynyk, a, a, a front court that featured um, Nerlens Noel, um, Isaiah Stewart, a Marvin Bagley. Combine that with him being the youngest player in the NBA. A lot of people, including myself at that time, thought there was a possibility that he could be spending a lot of time playing in the G League um, until the Pistons made some moves to move off some veterans or the season got deeper and they shifted into more of a restoring role. Um when I say that, I mean tanking role, like we saw the last two months. But there, there, that was some talk that was happening at that time, and eventually, and and before the season started, or really right as the season started, we saw that that just wasn't going to be the case with Jalen Duran, and we saw that all of that. He talked about this himself in his exit interview. He said he heard the people say that there was a chance he could be playing in the G League. That he may have to spend some time down there before he came up to the to the NBA. And he said he never thought that was a part of his season this year, and he proved why. He was one of the most successful rookies in the entire NBA this season. He's going to make an all-rookie team, probably an all-rookie second team, which is deserved. Um, Walker Kessler of the Utah Jazz had a just a, a crazy season. I, I can't. I don't think any Pistons fan can say that um, they're mad about Duran being on the second team. But Jalen Duran had an absolutely successful second season, or not second season, first season in the entire NBA. Uh, 9.1 points a game. He averaged 8.9 rebounds a game, shot 64% from the field, um, and 61% from the free throw line. The, six, the, the free throw line you'd like to see him improve on, um, it, at, at the beginning of the year, it was looking like he was going to be even worse than that. Um, but he ended up shooting it better as the season got along, so it was good to see that. Um, but really, his season took off when they elevated him to being a starter. And this season, he started 31 games for the Detroit Pistons. And in those games, he averaged 10.5 points a game, 10.6 rebounds, 1.4 assists. He shot 67% from the field and 70% from the free throw line in these games. He was by far the Pistons' best big this season, and it was almost like it was it was almost obvious out the gate, even when he wasn't starting to start the year. The same people, including myself, who thought that there was a chance he may play in the G League, 
I mean, it was almost immediate. As soon as the season started, it was like, oh my god, he might be the best big on the Pistons roster already. It, it, like, it was it was literally just like that, snap of a finger. And for a while, it was like, come on, we got to start Jalen Durham, we got to start Jalen Durham because he was just so evidently the Pistons' best big. And something that he showcased this season in his rookie year, which I think is going to be big for his future, and which is why he's one of the most intriguing young big men in the entire NBA, is his passing ability. The reads that he made in the short roll, the read he, the reads he would make from the high post area to backdoor cuts, his his decision making and dribble handoffs, and again his, his reads in short roll, how quick he was making these reads. Um, that's someone. That's something that you want from your starting center. It's something that you need from your starting center in today's NBA. They need to be able to make those reads, or you're at a disadvantage. Especially when your best players are guards, they'll be getting a lot of attention in the pick and roll. They'll get trapped a lot of times. They'll get hedged, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You need that guy rolling to the rim to be a smart player, a smart passer, and an accurate passer. And that's something that Jalen Dern showcased during his rookie season. It's what has me the most excited for him with the Detroit Pistons. Uh, moving forward, I, I look. We we reviewed Jaden Ivy season on the last podcast, and I look. I've told you guys how how well Jaden Ivy played this season. How much I thought he was, how impressive I thought Jaden Ivy was this season. But there were stretches of this season, and again, this isn't a slight to Jaden Ivy. There were stretches this season where Jaden Ivy was playing so well, and I thought even Jay, I thought Jalen Duran was playing even better. I, like there were stretches where I thought Jalen Duran was the Pistons' best rookie. This year, and that show that that says more about the Pistons' two rookies being awesome this year, but also the fact that the youngest player in the NBA for the Detroit Pistons, Jalen Duran, was absolutely outstanding in his rookie year. I can't wait to see him in the future. The comp that he's beginning is like Bam Adebayo, but also Dwight Howard. Um, I know Bam didn't have the greatest playing games. Um, don't let that you know get in your guys' way. Um, him becoming Bam would be really damn good. Um, but him and Dwight is like the his his arch the archetype that he has that he's been compared to, I should say, after his rookie season. I mean, the last stat I want to throw out to you guys before we move on is that at the rim, he was already just a fantastic finisher at the rim for the Pistons. He was in the 89th percentile across the entire NBA in finishing at the rim. He dunk, If he has a chance to dunk it, he's going to try to dunk it. And if he doesn't dunk it, it's probably because you fouled him. Like, it, it, he's just... he The, 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 the potential for Jalen Duran is absolutely through the roof. I like I, I can't put a cap on what his ceiling could be for the Detroit Pistons. I'm so excited to see him play. Again, I've, I've said this over and over, and this will be the last thing we mention. I've said this over and over on the podcast. People need to understand that we are legit probably like eight years away from this dude's ceiling. Guys don't hit their ceiling until like they're 25, 26, 27, 28. Like they're mid to late 20s is where people usually say you hit your prime. That's usually when it happens. He's 19. Like... We are years, years away from him being a finished product. And this is what he is already. Imagine what he can add to his game. Imagine all the, all the skills, the tools that he can sharpen by then. We are years away. He's already this good. I can't imagine how good he could possibly be, man. I, I'm so high on Jalen Duran. That was probably the Pistons' best. Like, if you look at value, the fact the Pistons got him at 13, probably the best move that Troy Weaver has done. Now, obviously, Jay and Ivy is really good. K Cunningham, obviously, at one. But at 13 for the value... I think that's the best move that Troy Weaver has done. But that's my takeaway from Jalen Duren's rookie season. I thought he was absolutely fantastic, and I can't wait to see what the future has for him. Um, let me know what you guys think about Jalen Duren's future or his rookie season and his future in the comment section down below or over on Twitter at Kuka Hill. When we come back, we're going to talk about Alec Burks, who I thought was the Pistons' most needed and most important veteran this season. You guys will hear why I feel that way when we come back. But first, I've got to tell you guys about one of our sponsors, eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know the part that will fit. Or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply again with ebaymotors.com. 
So I want to thank you guys again for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Lockdown Pistons. Hit that subscribe button or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. Um, let's get into Alec Burke's season. So the Pistons acquired two two veterans that would play meaningful roles for the Pistons before the season started. Alec Burks and Boyan Bogdanovich. Boyan Bogdanovich is, is better. Boyan Bogdanovich was the starter for the Pistons. Boyan Bogdanovich was the player that a lot of people thought maybe could get the Pistons a first-round pick at the deadline. A lot of people still think that he'll be moved on the draft night to get a first-round pick. He is perceived as the more viable player. Boyan Bogdanovich, that is. And I understand why. Boyan was, is really good offensively. Really damn good. And for the first, like, I don't know, two-thirds of the season, the dude was shooting the, the leather off the ball. Like, it was just, he was, he was, he couldn't miss. However, I'm here to tell you guys that I think Alec Burks was more important for the Detroit Pistons this season than Boyan Bogdanovich. Alec Burks, in his age 31 season, came off the bench and provided insane value for the Detroit Pistons this season. Let's just talk about how before he came back to the lineup, he missed the opening part of the season. Before then, the Pistons bench was awful. And when he came back, the Pistons bench immediately became the best bench in the entire NBA. And that was that was all to do with him. Now, other players started to play better with him in there, obviously because of him, because of his spacing, his ability to get uh, create scoring gravity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But again, yeah, that, that was him. And for the season, he shot 43% from the field. He shot a career high 41% from the from beyond the arc. And this this area right here, this area right here is why I believe that Alec Burks was the most important. Well, it's not the only reason, but it's probably my biggest reason why I think Alec Burks was the most important veteran for the Detroit Pistons this year. He averaged 3.7 free throws a game this year. And the way he drew fouls this year for the Pistons, the way the way he did it rubbed off on the Pistons guards and it's such it's it's such it's not like a I guess it's kind of like a tiny thing that maybe the casual person wouldn't notice but man it's such a big it, it, it's a big part of your game if you're able to add it to your game Alec Burks multiple times would draw free throws a game multiple times a game when you are able to shoot or if a guy goes over the screen because you're able to shoot sometimes guys go over the screen and pick and roll even when you can't shoot I don't get that but when guys go over the screen, they either have to like you know push forward and try skinny past the screen, or they try to go left or, or opposite arm over it and try to beat you over the screen. When they do that and they make contact with you, if you drive into them and they make contact with you, if you just fly up and sell the contact and take the shot, you can possibly get free throws. Alec Burks would do that over and over and over again. He knew how to create that contact. He knew how to sell that contact, give himself easy buckets at the line. Same thing on drives to the rim. Kind of how I mentioned to you guys that Jaden Ivey would draw a lot of free throws simply off beating guys with his first step and they wouldn't be able to shove at their feet fast enough. Kind of in that department. But Alec Burks would drive to the rim and as soon as he felt guys try to bump him to try to get in front of him, as soon as he felt any contact, fly backwards, fly to the side, and, ta- and sell the contact, get free throws. He did that over... It, it, seriously, he was an expert at that this season. I, I don't know if there's been a other, any other piston that I've seen over the last few years. Blake Griffin and his... 18-19 season was good at drawing fouls. But Alec Burks, with the way he was doing it, probably the most creative or or, or veteran, I don't know what, what would be the best word, but just the best one I've seen at drawing free throws this way in a few years for the Pistons. I can't think of anyone else. And it started to rub off on the Pistons' guards, and it's big. It's big. You have to draw free throws in this game to get easy shots for yourself. You absolutely have to. You have to. That, that's the best way to be efficient in this game. You have to be able to draw free throws. And you saw Jane Ivey start to do it a ton throughout the season. He was probably the, the biggest beneficiary of this. And you could tell that Alec Burks, not only was he doing it on the court, but it felt like he was obviously telling the young guards and teaching them how to do this behind the scenes. Jane Ivey was drawing free throws this way. And even Killian Hayes over the last, like I think it was like 15 games of his season was averaging the most free throws per game that he has in any other point of his career. I believe it was like 3.8 free throws a game because the Killian Hayes was drawing free throws the exact same way that Alec Burks had been drawing free throws. So if they're able either Killian Hayes, yeah, it was three, 
yeah, three, it was 3.2 free throws a game. My, my fault. Um, but if Killian Hayes or Jaden Ivey, or hopefully, for the love of God, hopefully, Cade Cunningham, despite the fact that I feel like Cade absorbs contact nonetheless, he just doesn't get respect for foul calls. But if Cade can watch this and learn how to sell contact and, and, and create contact like that and get free throws, oh my God, can you guys understand how big of a, an addition, how big of a plus that would be for Cade Cunningham's game? And that's why... If I had to pick one veteran for the Detroit Pistons to return next year, it's Alec Burks. I think Alec Burks means so much more to Kay Cunningham, to Jay and Ivy, to be honest with like teaching them the game and having them add stuff to their game than Boyan Bogdanovich. And it's why I think I went from, you know, wanting Alec Burks move for an additional pick in the draft to now I want him back on the roster next season. I th- he needs to be in the rotation not only just because of the stuff I mentioned with him helping and 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 the drawing of the free throws and that kind of stuff. He also is just a really damn good basketball player. Listen to some of these, these numbers I'm about to throw at you guys. As a pick-and-roll ball handler this year, 78th percentile in the NBA. As a spot-up shooter, 92nd, in the entire, 92nd percentile in the entire NBA. Transition, 58th percentile. Isolation, 99th percentile. He was good. He's a damn good basketball player. All jump shots, 83rd percentile. Catch and shoot. 80th percentile off the dribble jumpers 84th percentile he's just he's a really damn good basketball player a really good a really good role player to have in your team so not only will Alec Burks help Kay Cunningham help Jay and Ivy and the young guards moving forward he also will help them win games I don't know if they can for his value at that contract 10 million dollars at the backup two position I don't know if they can get better value than that I would just bring him back I think he would be I think he would definitely be welcomed back by every Pistons fan. He was really good for the Pistons this year. So I think he's the most viable Pistons veteran on the roster right now, um, even over Boyan. And I would move Boyan if I could. Alec Burks, I don't want to move. Doesn't mean he's untouchable. Doesn't mean I absolutely wouldn't move him. But I, don't, I wouldn't be looking to move him this offseason. I, I'd like him back in the roster next year. I think he helps in both facets. On the court, in the locker room, off the floor, whatever situation, I think Alec Burks helps. He's a really damn good basketball player, man. So that's my season review for Alec Burks. I gave him an A, A plus, man. When he came back, the Pistons bench soared. They were one of the best, if not the best, in the entire NBA. I, like I give him an A plus, man. I did not think Alec Burks would be this good for the Detroit Pistons, and he was. He was absolutely amazing. So let me know what you guys think about Alec Burks' season for the Detroit Pistons. Do you guys think he's the most valuable veteran on the team? Should they make sure he's on the roster next season? Let me know all that in the comment section down below or over on Twitter. At Kook Hill. When we come back, we'll review. You know, I've seen some Pistons fans say the player they want to be the Pistons, Udonis Haslam. We're going to be reviewing Rodney Magruder's season when we come back. I know you guys are super excited for that one. Uh, but first, I've got to tell you guys about one of our sponsors, FanDuel. Grand slams, no hitters, and double plays are back. And there's no better place to get on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's because right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to sign up, place your first bet, and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win. And with the NBA playoffs around, uh, a bet that I, I, I'd be looking at on an on a NBA series, I'd be looking at that Knicks-Cavs one. It's a bit of a toss-up, but... If you want me to be honest, I think I'm going to take the Cavs there. I take the Cavs over at FanDuel, but that's my just that's just my advice. Um, that's why I tell you guys to do. I were I was telling you guys to take the over on Jane Ivey's assist throughout the season. If you guys listened to me for that, you guys probably would have made a lot of money with FanDuel. But don't listen to me. What do I know, right? Um, so don't miss your chance again. No sweat. First bet up to one thousand dollars when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com/slash/locked-on to sign up. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League baseball so i want to thank you guys again for making locked on pistons your first listen of every single day we are free and available on all your podcast platforms if you haven't already head to the youtube channel at locked on pistons hit that subscribe button or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on that's another great way to support the podcast um before we get into rodney magruder's season i do want to say once again i apologize for the beeping going on in my apartment I don't know what it is. I can't tell if it's getting picked up by the mic, but if it is, I, I'm completely apologetic for that. It probably is pretty annoying in the background. Um, wherever it is, I'll definitely figure out what the hell it is. I think it's my smoke alarm, but I, my smoke alarm is like not making any 
doesn't have any lights flashing or anything. I thought when it rings, like, it's supposed to have lights flashing. But either way, whatever. I apologize for that. Um, but let's get into Rodney Magruder's season. So, Rodney Magruder, the other Detroit Pistons veteran on this team, 31-year-old season. Um, didn't play much, but when he did play at the end of this season, another vet that just played played well. I mean, I don't. he didn't come out here and just, you know, set the world on fire, but... At the last stretch of the games that he played, again, another vet that was just shooting the hell out the basketball. Corey Joseph was just shooting the hell out the basketball. Boyan, shooting the hell out the basketball. Alec Burks, shooting the hell out the basketball. And Ryan Magruder, for most of the season, was the Pistons fill-in. When one of the guards was hurt, he'd be the fill-in to come into the starting lineup. He rarely played throughout the season. He, he knows his role to be a vet in the locker room. Show these guys how to be, you know, professionals. Help them grow in the NBA as young men. And I, from everything we hear, from from everything we hear from coaches, from everything we hear from players, he's perfect in that role. The guys love him in the locker room. He does great things for the guys in the locker room. And again, I, I've said this to you guys a few times now over the last few weeks, over the last week or so, I'd say actually. JJ Redick has, on his podcast, the Old Man on Three, has had a few guys, few former players on his podcast. And they've mentioned the Houston Rockets. They've talked about veteran leadership just across the league. Zach Lowe on his podcast, Low Post, a few weeks ago, they talked about veteran leadership. And everywhere you go, they talk about how important this is, how important having veterans on your team is with a young team. It's vastly important. And look, I'm not trying to take shots at the Houston Rockets. The Rockets, I love their young core. I think they have a ton of talent. We've had Roos Williams on the podcast multiple times. We'll have Jackson Gatlin on the podcast eventually of Locked on Rockets. I think the Houston Rockets have a really damn good young core. And I think there's an argument for which team has the more attractive head coaching spot because of Houston's young core and their assets that they have. And this is not me taking shots at them at all. But I think I think even the most, you know, Stan... Houston Rockets fan out there would admit that, you know, they didn't have veteran leadership and there was a lot of drama that went on. There was a lot of talk about how they don't have a lot of structure in their, in their locker room. They don't have a lot of structure with the team. And that was one of the biggest reasons why they had such a tough season. One of the biggest reasons why Steven Silas is gone. And over and over, I keep hearing people talk about former players. I keep hearing, you know, these reporters talk about what they're hearing behind the scenes and nonstop just, veterans they need vets vets are important to young teams they may not play a lot they don't have to play a ton they don't have to average you know this that and the other but they need to be there for young guys to know how to play to know what to do and how to be young professionals at this point in their career i thought jr smith smith smoke eh. jr smith my goodness spoke about this very well on jj reddick's last episode he he really went into it and I thought hearing it from his perspective, someone who had some problems when he was younger in the NBA and talked about growing and the help of veterans throughout his career. Um, again, I suggest you guys listen to it. That's why the role of Rodney Magruder's on the team, even though we may not like seeing them when they come on and, and the coach plays them 30 minutes a game. We may not like it when they do that. But their role on their team, the Rodney Magruder's, the Corey Joseph's, they're incredibly valuable to a young team. So if the Pistons want to bring back Ronnie Magruder to be the 14th, 15th guy on the team just to be a vet in the locker room, and he just kept getting contracts just to do that, I mean, I would, I would understand it. Now, I don't know if the Pistons can just keep wasting two, three spots on that. They eventually need to have depth on their team at the wing position, I would say. Um, but if they want to do that with Ronnie Magruder and let him be the vet in the locker room for a few years, I have no problem with that. I have no problem with that because based on what I've seen happen with the Houston Rockets this year – and based on how I hear former players and all these people talk about it, I the piss I want the Pistons to have vets in the locker room. They need to have it desperately, and the young players love them. They they t- they speak very glowingly of them. And also, it helps when they eventually come in at the end of the season to play when you're tanking, um, like Ronnie Magruder did in these eight games from March th- March seventh to March twenty first before he also got ruled off of the season in the effort to tank. Um, was shooting 49% from deep on 6.1 attempts. It also helps when he comes into the game, if he's able to actually play and hit shots, he can also then go into the locker room and be like, hey, I'm not just someone who comes out here and talks. I can go out there and shoot as well. I can play some. I can play some. I'm not some trash bag that's just telling you some stuff I don't know. I can get out there and get some stuff done too. And on the season, uh, Ronnie Magruder shot 42.3% from deep. So, hey, I, I wouldn't have any problem with bringing Ronnie Magruder back. Another guy I'd give like an A-plus on his season. Did everything he was supposed to. Don't expect him to have big numbers, but when he does play, expect him to be effective on offense, and he does, and expect him to keep the locker room sane 
in during a losing losing season to help the coaching staff keep the locker room intact. We didn't hear no stories from the locker room with the Pistons. You guys didn't see anything happen on the sidelines with the Pistons. You didn't see any blow-ups, any rumors of people being mad with each other, guys not getting along with each other. Like we didn't we didn't hear any of that throughout this season. And I think that goes uh, gives a lot of credit to Dwayne Casey, but also the veterans on the team for echoing Dwayne Casey's message, but also relating to the players and teaching them how to be professional. That's Ronnie Magruder, Corey Joseph, Bojan, um, even Nerlens Noel well when he was on the team for the short period of time. So Ronnie Magruder, I thought he had a, a great season for what he was asked to do, and I wouldn't have any problem with him being the vet for the Pistons moving forward. Um, but that's all I've got for you guys today. Let me know what you guys think about Ronnie Magruder's season. Do you guys want him to be the Pistons, you Donis Haslam, like I've seen a few of you guys say. Um, let me know in the comment section down below or over on Twitter, at Kuka Hill. That's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you guys for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. Free and available on all your podcast platforms. Hit that subscribe button at the YouTube channel. Leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Stay safe. Enjoy these playoff games. And until next time, see you later. Peace out.